packed show as ever. Let's get on with it. Yes, good morning. It is a busy show this Sunday. Do let us know what you think about what you're hearing as the morning progresses. To do that, as ever, just use the hashtag BBC Sunday Show on social media. Now then, it's barely a month since Nicola Sturgeon resigned as First Minister and leader of the SNP, but wow, what a month it's been. The contest to replace her has descended, I think it's probably fair to say in some respects, into chaos. The candidates fighting with each other some raising questions about the election process itself and then the wider party on social media at least turning in on itself but over the weekend came a really extraordinary twist the man at the very top of the snp peter murrell the party's chief executive the husband of the first minister nicola sturgeon resigned yesterday he accepted the party had misled journalists and therefore misled the country over the number of members it has. Ultimately, he said the responsibility lay with him, so he had to go. No big deal, you might think. Who cares about how many members a party has? It's just a detail. And normally, you'd be right. But remember, those members are the electorate who will vote to choose who will eventually become the next First Minister of Scotland. So in a very real sense, it is a matter for all of us that the contest is completely open, transparent and scrupulously fair. In a minute, we will drill down into the heart of all of this with Michael Russell, the party president. But first, to get a bit more background on it, here is our political correspondent, Lindsay Bewes. Lindsay, uh, for viewers and listeners, I think probably worthwhile just at this point, just go over the events of the past few days. Yeah, I think so, because it's been a heck of a week, hasn't it, in this SNP leadership contest. So we started off with more televised debates. The candidates have become known for having a bit of a go at each other in these debates. That was followed by a call from, in the end, all three candidates, Hamza Youssef, Ash Regan and Kate Forbes, to see the membership numbers. They wanted the party to release those numbers. The SNP had previously said that would be done uh, at the end of the contest when the result became known. And that had followed on from reports in a newspaper uh, last weekend that the party membership had dropped by some 30,000. That then escalated to calls from two of the candidates, Kate Forbes and Ash Regan, for external auditors to be brought in to oversee this election process. By Thursday, well, then we got the membership numbers from the party that those candidates had been asking for, which showed a, a drop of 30,000 members, uh, which contradicted earlier statements by the party. Then we got the resignation of Murray Foote, who was the head of media at Holyrood that came on Friday. He said that there were serious issues with statements he had issued in good faith around those membership numbers. And then yesterday, murmurings that the national, uh, the executive uh, uh, committee of the SNP was putting Peter Murrell, the chief executive of the party, under pressure to resign. He was facing a vote of no confidence if he didn't do so and then his resignation came. Now, this has raised huge questions around this leadership contest, this perception of trust in the process. And now we have one of the candidates, Ash Regan, calling for legal action to pause this leadership campaign. And, you know, some people will be really have a vested interest in this, be fascinated by the whole thing. Other people will just be listening to this in the car this morning or the telly will be on in the corner of the kitchen and it will pass them by. They're not fixated in politics. Some of those people might just think this is a kind of Holyrood bubble issue. It's yeah. niche. Who cares? It is quite a big deal, this, right? Well, it is because, of course, whoever wins this contest is going to go on to become first minister. There doesn't have to be a general election at Holyrood for that to happen. They will be appointed uh, through the process of a vote in Parliament as First Minister. So it is vital that this contest is, is not just uh, trusted and transparent, but it's also seen to be trusted and transparent. And it also raises a lot of questions about the future for the SNP. Uh, Peter Murrell, the issues surrounding him were broader and deeper than just these membership numbers. There had been uh, complaints that too much power was being centralised uh, between Peter Murrell, Nicola Sturgeon and John Swinney. They are all leaving now. Of course, Peter Murrell is married to Nicola Sturgeon and that too much power was 
centred at the top of the party. So what does this mean for the future of the SNP, the outcome of this leadership process, and ultimately for the new leader who's going to have to bring all of this back together again, stitch it all back together again after they win the contest? Yeah, Lindsay, that is uh, a fantastically useful background. Thank you very much indeed for that. Let's now then speak to the man who stepped in yesterday to pick up the baton from Peter Murrell, the party's interim chief executive and the president of the SNP, Michael Russell. Good morning, Mr Russell. Morning, Martin. Uh, listen, thanks for being with us this morning, first of all. Um, uh, that was a fairly bleak assessment of what's been going on these past few days. Um, the front pages of the papers, a lot of them use the word turmoil. What is going on? Is your, is your party in turmoil? Well, I think it's fair to say that there is a, a tremendous mess and we have to clear it up. And that's the task that I'm trying to take on in the short term. And the most important thing in that short term, and I entirely agree with your analysis that this is about Scotland, not just about the SNP, is that we have a fair um, electoral process that produces a clear accepted outcome. And that's why I've been talking to the candidates about that in the last 24 hours. I'm very pleased, for example, to see that um, uh, Kate Forbes today has confirmed her belief in the integrity of the process. That is the same position I understand as Humza Yusuf has taken. I'm in dialogue with um, Ash Reagan to, I hope, to, to get to the same position. She has questions. I'm very happy to answer those questions. We've got to do that. We've got to have this concluded in, in the next eight days. And then we've got to look at the party, and the new leader has to look at the party. It's not a job for me. The new leader has to look at the party and say, let's rebuild this, and let's rebuild the trust of Scotland because it is about the trust of Scotland. And this has not been an edifying process. Uh, there hasn't been a contested leadership in the SNP for 19 years, and it shows. We've been out of practice in doing this, and, uh, and what has happened has not been good for the party, and it's not been good for Scotland. And we have to change it. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the, there's a lot of criticism generally of actually just the attitude of the people who ran the party in the past, almost running the country on a need-to-know basis and thinking that journalists, the public, didn't need to know a lot of stuff. There was an arrogance to it, is the accusation. Would you think that is fair? Well, I can understand the accusation. I think I would also point to the fact that some of these people have been under the most tremendous pressure. And in addition to that pressure, they have been under the most tremendous scrutiny and insults. I mean, some of the social media stuff has been absolutely disgraceful. And, you know, members of our staff have been appallingly abused. Now, I think that's part of having a, 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 a contest in the social media age, which we've not had before. Um, and I think we need to learn that lesson. But yes, there are lessons to be learned, there are changes to be brought about. And what I want to do in the brief period, I hope it is a brief period that I, I shall be doing this, is to steady that ship, to open things up and to say, yes, we need to learn things and to get us to the position that we have a new leader in place and that leader will have a tremendous responsibility. And I might say, trying to be an optimist, a, tre a tremendous opportunity too, uh, to, to get things right and to start off with an entirely reset position. And that this, will be good. This doesn't sound like the party you've been defending to me for years uh, in interviews like this. Oh, I, I think it does. I think it does. I think the party is a, basically a good party, a party that is focused on the good of Scotland. But things have gone wrong and spectacularly wrong in recent weeks. And we need to sort that out. I'm very open about that. Uh, one of the candidates, Ash Regan, you said you've spoken to the other two. They seem pretty satisfied. She was saying yesterday morning in the papers that she's been speaking to lawyers and wants this whole process paused. Is that, as far as you're aware, still her position? And do you think, actually, there is a case for pausing this process until the whole thing's sorted out? No, I, I don't believe there is a, a case for a variety of reasons. And I think the fact that the other two candidates have, have openly declared their... A belief in the integrity of the process is very positive. But I don't want to do anything other than have a dialogue with each of the candidates and to try and persuade them that this is the, the right thing to do. And therefore, I don't want to claim anything about you know, my conversations with, with Ash. I've had two in the last, uh, since yesterday afternoon. But I do want to be able, I hope, to persuade her that this is a, a, a process that is full of integrity. It is, after all, a process that is run by the party's national secretary, not by the staff of the party. It is a process that is uh, that is contracted out to an independent contractor of yeah. unimpeached integrity. So in these circumstances, I think we need to complete this okay. course, we need to get this done, and then we need to move on. Well, two things on that. Lorna Finn, the, the national secretary who's running this process, was asked by the candidates previously, how many members does the party have? Effectively, just they're asking, what's the size of the electorate in this election? It's not an unreasonable question. And they were told, you'll find out after the voting's finished. Now, yes, should she still be running this contest? 
Yes, she should be, because that was the practice and has been the practice. It wasn't the right practice for this election. That's crazy, isn't it? Not telling the candidates how many voters there are. No, it's the basics. That, well, crazy or not, that was a practice that was, 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 was in place for all the elections we've had run in this way. And those have been for selections, they have been for office bearers' positions and other things. Was it the right one for this one? No, it wasn't. OK. I, I don't really say that. You, you're saying there's an independent organisation running this and they run a lot of um, these kind of um, exercises for you. Michelle Thompson, who is running Kate Forbes' campaign, said the party will tell you that they are running all of this and they are doing it completely independently. That's not true. They're not running the whole process and there are party hands involved. Who's right? Uh, well, I'm telling you what the situation is. I'm telling you that there is an independent contractor. I noticed yesterday, for example, that somebody who'd been a strong critic of the party accepting, having spoken to the contractors that they were independent. They are independent contractors. They're, they're given the information. They get on and do this. I understand, and I've asked this question, uh, uh, that there is no access to those figures until the end of the process. That is exactly the integrity that there needs to be. Okay. And I think to make sure that we finish this job and get this done. I'm not in any sense defending some of the decisions that have been made. What I'm saying is that my focus is, over the next week, to get this process concluded and to do so so that we have a clear outcome and that outcome then therefore allows not just party to move forward, but you've been absolutely right in what you said at the beginning, Scotland to move forward and for trust to be re-established. Okay. On, on that, that issue, terms. Here's, here's a really crucial question, central to, to the whole issue of trust. See if you can answer this one. Why? Why were, do you think, the party misleading the public over the number of members it had? I have no idea why that took place. I have no idea at all. I have the greatest respect for Murray Foote. I've worked very closely with him. I've known Peter for a, a long time. I'm not going to speculate about, about what happened then, but we do need an answer to that. Now, I'm not in a position to give did, you did that you answer. Know, did you know, Mike Russell, how many members the party had? No, I didn't know. Because why the on earth not? You preside well, over the well, party. Well, well, I'm about to tell you why not. Uh, and the reason I didn't know is that they're reported every year. They're simply reported every year. We have not had that report in terms of the year, last year end. Um, but I would not have, certainly, have gone out on a limb in terms of figures uh, believing anything other than that. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, they were a surprise to me. I think we need to find out why that took place. I'm certainly not defending it. But I do think that what we need to do now, and I go back to this, Martin, because it really is crucially important. I need to focus, I very much need to focus on getting this process no, concluded. No, no, absolutely. But, but as part of that process, there, there are a number of questions you need to answer. And, and I want to know, I mean, you say that the, the, the membership's tallied every year. You lost a third of your members over a period of two years. Who yes. was sitting on those figures and not telling people about that as it was going on? You were leeching members. You must, as president, well, have been I, I desperate to know leeching. why. I think the word leeching perhaps is a bit pejorative. We were losing members and we were losing members that we should have known about. Absolutely. And we didn't. We clearly were not told about that. Now, that is something I want to know why that, that took place. But I don't want to know it this week. What I want to know this week is that we've got a process that we can complete and we can get a new leader of the party and somebody who will have to then gain the trust of the people of Scotland. I keep saying that because it's really important. We've got to get this process through. Is it reasonable for people to ask this morning if, if that's the way you run your party, why should we trust you to run a country? Of course it's reasonable and I hope the answers lie in the work that we've done over the last 15 years through a variety of, of, of very important things that we've done and through a very, very difficult pandemic where we were led in a, in a most, well, a tremendous way by Nicola Sturgeon. Is so it... as far as I'm concerned, of course there are things to do. Would I rather this hadn't happened? Would I rather I wasn't sitting here talking to you this morning? Of course I would. But is what it... we have to do is take responsibility and therefore make sure that we not only make amends, we explain that to people, and I'm sure that will happen, and we regain their trust. And yeah, that's what I want. Because people will also be wondering this morning if, if you misled the public over the size of the electorate to select the new First Minister, what else are you misleading us about? Would well, that be a fair I, well, question? I, yes, just, just to make it clear, I, I said I didn't mislead the public. No, 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 you want, as a party, not you no, as an individual. I want, to know, I want to know why the party, why, why that happened, of course. But I go back again, Martin, the most important thing now is to make sure this process takes place and concludes. Of course, there is then a big job to do, a very big job to do, to regain the trust of the people of Scotland. And I'm sure that can be done and will be done. How damaged is that trust this morning? Well, I hope it's not damaged in any way that cannot be repaired by a good new leader taking uh, the opportunity to show what they can do, to show what the party can do. Because I have to tell you that Scotland needs independence more than ever. You're going 
on to discuss with an unelected Tory minister a, a budget that has penalised the people of Scotland, and particularly the poorest people of Scotland. Scotland needs to be able to make its own decisions. It needs to be able to use its own resources. That is what the SNP stands for. That's what the SNP has to go back and talk about again and has, again. Has your cause been set back engage, by all this? And engage with the people of Scotland to ensure that they do choose a better future. I have no idea. The, 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 the polling figures do not tell me that. What I want to do is to make sure that that is the case that we are putting forward with honesty, with integrity, and doing so in, in a way that the people of Scotland can it, trust. It, That's what we need to do. Here's next. a question I should have got round to before now. Why have you lost a third of your members, do you think? What's going on? Oh, well, I think there's a variety of reasons. I think if you look at organisations, membership organisations, one of the things that goes first when there is a cost of living crisis, there may be issues also that people disagree with. I don't know. I simply do not know, and considering I only knew the figures you know, two or three days ago, I don't think I'm in a position to do that. Part of it is cost of living figures. I have no doubt about that. If there are other issues, then we need to get to the bottom of that. Do, do you think, I mean, so I'm slightly obsessed by the fact you didn't know these figures until a few days ago. You, this is the party over which you preside, and this, effectively, crisis was going on. A third of the members have left, and nobody told you. You must be furious about that, aren't you? Well, what I want to know is I want to know why that took place. But, you know, I am also quite happy to defend the position that the party executive will be told once a year. I think obsessing about the figures from month to month is not a healthy thing for any party to do. What they should yeah, be Yeah, but obsessing. when there's a pattern, when there's a pattern well, well, developing, somebody well, should come to you and say, listen, boss, yes, this isn't course, good, rather than wait a well, year to tell you. Yes. Yeah, uh, we need to make sure that we understand the reasons for this. And we need to make sure that the flow of information is better. Uh, and, of course... I want the, the national executive to be well informed. And there are issues, you raised them at the beginning, about how that has operated. But I also want to make sure that the SNP is an effective servant of the people of Scotland. I want to make sure it continues to win elections. Those are all things that I'm going to obsess about, actually before I obsess, uh, about membership. OK, do, do you think, I mean, a, a key question, I guess, would be, do you think the gender recognition reform bill has a part to play in this? Because if that proved so unpopular... I have no idea whether that's the case or not, and, and to, with the greatest respect, Martin, neither do you, because we have no data as to, as to why those members are not, uh, not members. Sure. So I have that's, no idea. That's, 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 a, that's a big job for the party. Um, listen, Kate Forbes has said this morning in an interview with Laura Kunzberg, too few people were making too many big decisions in the running of the party, nodding to this accusation that's been long-standing that the SNP and therefore Scotland was run by a little clique. Is that fair? Well, I, I, I'm not sure I would say it was run by a little clique. Uh, what I do think is that clearly one of the issues during the membership, uh, during the leadership contest, has been the internal democracy of the party, R rightly so, quite obviously. And therefore, whoever wins will take that issue on. Kate's laying out her stall on that, and she's right to do so. I'm sure the other candidates lay it out as well. As far as I'm concerned, and I go back to this point, we have to move ourselves through, get the result out of there, and then whoever is leader is going to have to take on these issues, and I think without doubt say that we need to look at a different way. But the decision about how, for example, the national executive is constituted was made by the party. It was made by all the members in conference. And I have to say, our party conference is bigger than any other party conference in Scotland. And therefore, by definition, more people are involved in making those decisions. But a new leader will want to say, this is how I think it should be, and debate and discuss that with the leadership. And I'll welcome that. Is the party humbled by this? I think the party should be humbled by it, and I think it should learn from its experience, but the party should be determined to go on serving the people of Scotland, and that's absolutely what it exists for. Does how much it changes from here depend on who wins this electoral process? Well, I've deliberately taken no public position on who wins. I'm the party president, and it would be wrong to do so. But whoever does win will have not only a big task, they will have a big opportunity. And the opportunity is to, is to reset the position, to present the case to the people of Scotland, to re-earn the trust of the people of Scotland, to move forward. So that's what somebody will have to take on a, a week on Monday. And if they don't, do you lose power in Scotland? Could you lose the next election? I, is that how serious this is? Every political party can win or lose elections without a doubt. Uh, what I want to see is not just the SNP winning elections. I want to see the SNP leading Scotland to independence. That's what Scotland needs. That's what I've spent my political life arguing for, and it's needed more than ever. So that's what I want to see happening. And there is an opportunity here to learn, and to learn from mistakes of the past, undoubtedly. All right. Michael Russell, thank you very much indeed uh, for coming on and having that discussion with us this morning. It is much appreciated. My, uh, Michael Russell there, the president of the SNP.